Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This video is again a tutorial about textures, seamless textures, but this is a special situation. Uh, we will make our own water texture. And a water texture is a very complex uh, seamless texture type my opinion uh, because of the the rhythm and the 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 flow of the lines and everything so it's a very specific uh, seamless texture and i think you can't really capture that that good with uh, pictures so it's necessary to make it based on the node system so uh, sounds kind of weird but you will see in a second what i mean yeah so um what else oh yeah i switched to uh blender 3.0.1 um i have to be honest uh there are uh, tiny differences for the tutorials you should be able to make the same thing with a different version, uh, there shouldn't be a huge difference. So, you should be able to follow along. So, okay, good. Now, for now, what, what to do? Let's delete the default cube. I'm sorry, buddy, but he dead now. So, okay, let's make a new collection new collection okay we will mm, actually let's keep the light but hide it in the viewport and this camera uh, we can already set up our camera for now let's put everything here to zero and also hide it okay now you should have this empty area here and let's click on our second collection and hit shift a and let's open up a plane very important for this step don't change the dimensions keep the dimensions as the default the default dimensions okay um, because this can mess up the whole tutorial so Keep that in mind. Okay, good. Let's call our plane PS1 water. Good. Let's click here on material properties. New material. And very important, we are here in the solid display mode let's change to material preview this here okay good and that's the basic setup and oh all so we can uh, already set up our camera let's unhide the camera again and Let's go he in here, output properties, and change the resolution to a square format. Like that. 1080 times 1080. Or let's make it 1K. 1024 times 1024. It's not that important currently but uh we will make the first uh texture will be a 1k version and we will scale it down um also here in this window so now camera data properties switch perspective to autographic now let's pull it up here on the z-axis location c zero point one okay and let's hit the zero on the numpad okay that's good 
And now a very important part. Our water um, plane here has a dimension of 2 meters times 2 meters. The orthographic type, the perspective would give you uh, a perspective view and orthographic gives you a flat view. So we have a flat view and we want to adjust the scale. Oh, we had to um, input the location 0 0.1. So let's hit one on the numpad again. So the camera is actually above the floor. So it's not inside the floor, it's a bit above the floor. And that's important to show actually what's going on here. So now zero again on the numpad. We are in the render view and very important. Don't activate camera to view because if you toggle that and you scroll around, you can, oh, you can change nothing. Okay, <laughs> take that back. So very important, the dimensions of the square is two meters times two meters and the camera, autographic scale, let's put in two. So our camera view is a square. Uh, a square resolution and the orthographic view scale is set to 2 and the dimensions of the water plane is 2 times 2. So when we render this texture we get exactly one square and that's very important. We don't want any seams or something so for example that or, or here this frame no we want exactly a square so we can test it by hitting f12 this will automatically render out our current image okay good so hit zero on the numpad again so we set up our uh, rendering let's hide the camera for now and let's continue Give it a quick save, make a folder with your project and save it in there. I already, already made a folder. Let's continue and that's the basic setup. Let's continue and let's go inside the shading tab. We made a material, material one here, material properties. We hit new and you know what? Let's rename it. water okay and let's go into the shading again it's very important that you don't have this active uh, you have to be inside the material preview so like this okay good now it will get a bit complicated uh, so you really have to pay attention step by step and yeah, let's do that. This is the default setup of our current material. It's a principle BSDF and yeah, we can change here a few things like specular, metallic and, and so on. So first step for inside the shading tab is to delete the principle delete okay now it should look like this you can press here add and type in what I'm uh, what we are searching for or shift a and the first thing uh, we will search for is a noise texture search noise noise texture very noise. So let's put it in here. And the second thing will be a color ramp. Color ramp. Here it is. Okay. You know what? Let's already plug it in. Color into surface and factor into factor. No, we have this kind of noise here. Okay, doesn't look that color-like yet. 
So uh, let's change the first color to blue. So bring this one up here and let's take this light blue and this white. Let's keep the white for now. And while we are bringing them closer together, we get a kind of um, sky-like texture. Already looks very cool. I think, yeah, uh, you can uh, also use that for a sky texture if you want. But now the problem is uh, it's not a seamless texture. So to actually check in on that, let's apply a array. An array is something that will repeat your thing you apply the array to. So modifier properties, add modifier, array. And yeah, let's keep factor X one and another array. And let's go on X down on zero. We already have that Y on one. And now we have a repeating square. Good. The thing is, it's actually not a repeating texture. It's only applying the noise um, on the repeated surface. So, as you can see here, this shape here is nowhere else. So it's not a repeating pattern uh, with seamless textures. We have to change that. Um, but before that, a uh, very important thing, uh, we just plugged in straight up the color ramp into the material output. So if we go here into the shading viewport, it's unlit and that's very important, just so you know. Okay, um, first step we have to do uh, to get an actual, actual uh, repeating pattern. Uh, we will attack the actual water look later on with your noise texture and the color ramp. This is just for us to check in on it. Let's change this here from 3D to 4D. Okay, that's the first step. And now it will get a bit weird. So you have to, yeah, um, stay with me. Wait, give it a save. So that's very basic. That's very basic. I think when you learn this, you can already make amazing clouds and uh, weird Van Gogh-like um, patterns and acid strip shit. So, but now, now we are coming to the, the cool mathematically uh, part of the whole thing. Um, add uv map put in a map now we need a um vector vector scale uh, vector math ve vector math okay Next thing is a separate. Let's put this here and a combine. Let's put this one here. So let's take this for now and put it a bit here on the side. This a bit on the side. We need a bit. We need space. Okay. We got the the W because we changed to 40. That's very important. So now we need to add a simple math note. 
and let's duplicate that. Okay, now let's plug that in. So let's plug in the, oh, uh, very important, here on this vector math node, if it says add, it's not very here also add. Uh, you can find the actual Okay, this is a vector math node and we need to change that to scale Scale, okay, now let's plug in the UV into the vector nice and let's plug in this vector to Vector, nice. Now, now, now the, the X into, oh, here's also something to change. Here, this add and this add, we need here a, a, sign, a sign. And here a cosine. This will allow us to repeat the pattern on at least the x-axis. We After that, we will uh, repeat that and we plug in the same stuff for the y-axis. So we will end up with a repeating pattern on the x and the y-axis and get a seamless texture. So now let's plug in the value to the x. This value to the Y and let's test it. Plug in this into the vector. Let's give it a look. Okay, nice. Now, like I said, we have a repeating pattern on the X axis. So you see here, red, the red line is the X axis. So it worked, it totally worked out so far. So we map into the vector map, we changed it to scale, we plugged it in into separate x, y, z. We made two math nodes and changed them to sine and cosine, plugged them in into combine x, y, z. And that whole situation got plugged in into the noise texture. So now we want a uh, repeating pattern on the y-axis too. Let's, oh wait, this is not right. Let's mark them, select them, duplicate. And now we need the, the y-axis. Plug them in. Just like that. Yeah, it's a bit more complicated. We plug that into the Z axis because we have four dimensions. So now we have an actual tiling going on here. And now let's plug in the cosine into the W. So we basically plugged in everything the right way, but still it's not quite connecting. And also the color, we, we need to adjust some stuff and also the distortion. So the nodes are correctly set up and plugged in just like this. And now very important step because we want this uh, repeating pattern, seamless textures around our texture. We need to set up here inside the scale pi so pi times 2 because we have two um, separate uh, angles hit enter and now we have a seamless texture you're welcome don't change this here very important don't sh don't change this don't touch it so now this is all done now we can mainly focus on this part here. Okay, so I think 
personally the pattern is a bit too tiny and also we have to make it more water-like. So I would say let's change the distortion and pull down the scale to 2 or maybe even lesser than that. How about that? That looks very water-like. So the details. Water is very organic, so I would keep the details down to zero and the roughness also to zero. Okay, this looks very water-like, but the colors are kind of. So what do we need? So there are many ways and colorations of water. Um, I would go with a very anime-like, very bright colored water, but you can change that and make it to more like a dirty lake kind coloration. Uh, for water it's very important to have at least three colors. Uh, a top part, white areas, with, which are um, reflecting the light basically. The, the deep uh, water area which is very dark and isn't catching a lot of light and the mid area it gets brightened up by the sunlight so we need three colors a dark blue tone a bright blue tone and a white so let's do that let's hit here the let's select the first one hit plus now we got a mid tone and Let's change the first one to a very dark blue. More in this area here. Pull it a bit down. And this, let's change this to the bright blue up here. And nice. Now we have the, the dark area, the bright area and the, the white spots. Let's take the white. Pull it all the way up. And let's pull that down. The majority of the water should be the, the middle tone and the dark areas should be very subtle. And also the white areas. Also the white areas should be very subtle too. Not that intense, very subtle, like here. Okay, how about that? Oh, I like that. That's, that's a nice water-like texture. Let's pull the darker one a bit more down. And that's already looking very water-like. Nice. So what can we change? We can change here the distortion. Looks like moving water, but I think I'm very happy with that result. So we are done with that area here and I won't change everything, anything here. So let's focus on this area. It's kind of blurry. That's way too noisy. Let's, I don't know, let's keep it on. Uh, I kind of like that. Also the scale, maybe let's scale it a bit down on one, for example. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's uh, kind of blurry right now. Um, because we will pixelate it anyway for because we want a PS1 like aesthetic. Okay, I got here my pool pattern and I'm currently very happy with the result. So let's render this one out. We already set up our camera. So if we press um, F12, we 
just rendered out a seamless texture for the water. So also the um, option would be we can press zero on the numpad, get a preview of our rendering and yeah what's left yeah maybe I want want it a bit bigger in scale more like that because I want more white more white parts yeah more like that why not the darker one a bit more subtle okay so like I said you can press F12 to get the in the, the rendering from your setup from your ca uh, camera setup or you press here rendering render image and you get the same result let's press image save as I expect you to have a folder and let's um call it water texture underscore 1k good let's save this image and let's make a pixelated low poly version of the same texture let's uh, go in here into render properties film filter size press 0 enter let's go in here post processing dithering 0 okay and now let's change here the resolution I want one texture with uh, 128 pixels times 128 pixels and hit enter and you see it's readjusting the the view port let's hit f12 and now we get a a lower version of our water texture image save as and let's call it the same but instead of the 1k 128 px pixels save nice and now let's make an even smaller version 64 times 64 enter f12 and ah, I like the pixelation awesome image save as and 64 pixel save nice let's make a variant of our texture let's increase the distortion a bit here and also the scale nice really like that let's do it the other way render render image image save as and water texture 2 or let's call it water 2 save image let's go in the layout gonna save it again and let's hide this for now i'm gonna create uh, let's make a new um plane new plane and give it a new texture and let's call it texture test nice okay and now let's try our textures we just created we want to try them let's go in here base color hit the yellow dot we created a new texture and point image texture open and let's choose our 1k texture change this to closest so far so good it's not repeating but uh, let's 
pull up the roughness for now pull down the specular let's go into the uv editing hit a and oh change here hit we want to select everything hit a scroll a bit out hit s and yeah like like that let's try it just scroll out to stretch the texture out looks pretty nice my opinion it's pretty nice let's try our pixelated versions for that i want uh, emission shading let's delete that add emission plug that in plug that in closest yeah that's true okay and let's test our pixelated version open and let's go one level down pretty cool but i think more pixelation would be better good that we made a variant nice yeah now we got a pixelated water texture let's try the other one texture one this was this with the with the smaller scale and i think the the other one is a bit too noisy with the the higher scale this is a bit too noisy good that i made uh, a variant uh, 128 pixels yeah the smaller scale looks way better nice yeah good this will be my main texture the strokes also look very wave-like nice seamless water texture nice uh yeah you know what i i'm going to show you how to animate the water i think we we still have time for that and that's a very important step for you as an artist so we want animated water so let's go into the shading uh wait, wait give it a save okay now let's animate the water texture go into shading actually into shading and we have here basically uh, half of the job done so now uh let's we need a mapping map mapping and we need texture coordinates texture coordinates okay let's plug in the uv into the vector and let's plug in the vector in to the vector nice so far so good um okay we need to open up here a uh, an animation slider a timeline so let's go to the corner down here and you can just uh, hold left click and pull it up and now let's go into timeline nice and phew, i don't know yeah let's let's go with the 150 for now you could change that to a new frame rate if you want but let's go with the 150 so 
we want to create our first frame to animate our texture and for that let's we, we will only work with the location let's adjust our view like this and when we you see when we pull up and down here it changes the position of the texture and here is very important like i said in the start the dimensions of our texture original texture was two times two and so we have to keep the demand for the texture to start and to begin again to fully loop we need to change the position by two meters so let's keep that in mind let's um let's say for example we put in here minus one wait i, I show you a simple step so we have here zero right click insert keyframe and now let's drag it down to the last frame let's change this to two and this to two did this should fully loop the whole texture. Right click, insert keyframe. Okay. Yeah, you have to click on the actual plane to see the keyframes. So let's test it. Hit um, spacebar or here play animation. And you see with the end of the animation, it's a, okay. Wait, select both and and the start. Right click, handle type, in the uh, polation mode, linear. So it will not um, accelerate at the end, uh, at the start and decrease speed at the end and stuff. So let's watch it again. So, and because we will we start with zero and come until to the two it will fully repeat you see we created a, a a loop animation in our texture perfect so very nice very nice this could be um already the ocean you could uh it could that way you can animate a river for example because I put in here um, two and uh, two vectors Z and Y, it scrolls down across and not straight into one direction. But if you want it uh, for something, let's try that. So let's go back to the first frame, zero, totally fine. And here, for example, let's change the Y to zero, right click, replace keyframe. Now it won't go across, it will get going only one direction. Like that. Yeah, and you see here again in the gizmo, X axis, Y axis, and we were here in the middle. So but I liked the previous version more, so let's keep that. And you know what? We can, let's say we, we want to animate a, a pool, for example, with tiny wave movement or, a, I don't know, a river or a water level with, with silent water. Water has tiny movements because of the wind and everything, but not huge waves. So we want that. Let's drag across here, right click, duplicate, drag it down. And now we need um, shift A, wait, shift A, mix shader. Let's plug in the, the second version. Now we have two textures. See, 
one is holding still and the other one is is uh and um is going in one direction perfect so let's So, yeah, it has no keyframes, so we have here 2-2. Two, two. And um, for example, okay, let's just make it, just so I can show you, let's make it minus 2, mi minus 2, 2-2, two, two, okay. Right, cl right click, insert keyframe. Let's go here to the start. Let's put in one one, insert keyframe. Okay, so we emitted them across each other. The thing is, it's the same texture and the texture will meet on zero, zero at the start. And then it will start to animate across and it will meet again on zero, zero. Uh, let me show, that, show you that. You see it's going into different direction, uh, directions, but it's meeting again in the middle and so on and so on. Yeah, we don't want it. Doesn't make that much sense, but we can uh, amplify the effect by changing the second texture to not the same texture, but to the water two version. Let's do that. And now let's hit play. Or you know what, let's keep this one on zero. Place keyframes and here at the end, uh, zero. Place keyframes. Okay, now it should work. Okay, nice. So you see, now they're going in different directions, and because we used uh, two different textures, the effect is amplified. Okay, nice. I hope you got something out of this tutorial um, I think it's a very important necessary technique um, to animate and create your own water textures it will totally improve your projects because you can't uh, think of a project without any water elements uh, or liquids for example you can use this for um, a pot uh, a pot on in the kitchen and make some animated boiling um don't know soup or coffee or something you can use it for your pool you can use it for a river for a lake you can change up the colors and use it as a as a lava um river or something like that get creative with the technique and yeah um a big thanks to my patreons uh without them this wouldn't be possible uh, if you also want to support me uh, to create more stuff like this consider becoming a patreon um, or consider become uh, or consider to subscribe press a like and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below uh, yeah I hope you you liked it <laughs> See you in the next one, I guess. <laughs>